As Vice Chairman, I'll call me into order because Mr. Halla is AWOL. Thank you, Dr. Bissett. He can't make it tonight. I will call the meeting to order. Uh, I just want to add one little thing to the agenda. We have a student here who would like to say something to the committee. So we, even though we don't have a public comment section on here, we're going to do it anyway. So have at it. Just go for it. Introduce yourself, though. Um, hi, I'm Sophia Rossi. I'm a sophomore here. And I was asked to come and say something about what the student council was doing. Um, essentially, all we're doing right now is planning this, uh, planning for your week, which is this week. So today was twin day, and then tomorrow was on PSAT, so they decided to do pajama day, and then costume day. And then for the seniors on Friday, it's toga day, and the rest of the schools during blackout. And it's the day of the pep rally, which the student council is organizing. Thank you. Got it. Gonna have a big bonfire or anything like that? I wish. They don't let us put things up there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very nice job. Very nice job. It is a one item agenda because we that's why we scheduled this meeting to devote specifically to the report that was created by the building subcommittee. So without further delay, we will turn that over to Mr. Modesto, who is in charge of this operation, and we'll go for it. Excellent. Um, Thank you all. First, I just want to introduce our members of our subcommittee. Um, we have Bob Armstrong from Conway, Phil Cantor, as you guys know, from Conway. In Deerfield, we have Trevor McDonald over there, um, and Mr. Decker. We still have Scott Bergeron from Sunderland, where it's got down there. Um, Judy Pierce, as we know, one of ours, and then Fred Orlowski and Bob Holland. Bob is, could not make it tonight as the last minute, um, being in his schedule. But I also want to introduce Joe Markarian, and Joe is, um, we guys have seen on paper, he's been our, um, he's been someone who's just been crucial to putting this report, report together, and I want to thank him um, in, front of, in front of everyone here, in front of the cameras. He, without you, we wouldn't have gotten to the progress we've made. Um, he's the, the backbone behind and author of putting this report together for us, and as I go through, through things tonight, I'll be deferring to Joe to help with any explanation that I can't answer or the other committee can't, um, committee members can't answer. But thank you, Joe, from the bottom of my heart. You really have a, it really has a, been a great working with you. Um, so, all right. So moving forward, um, I just want everybody to understand. I'm going to act as MC to the report, but it's a full committee giving the report. So I've asked them to kind of jump in. If I'm talking too fast or going over things too quickly. Um, and I understand there's a lot to digest in this report, okay? Because we were asked to go and look at what can we do regarding the long-term, the 10-year plan of the financial needs for repairs and, and um, repairs and uh, other issues in the building um, of Frontier Regional. And we've come back with much more. Um, and so we're gonna kind of go through that. I want to remind everybody, this is a draft. And so, and I, I mean that, in all um, sincerity of the word. Tonight we're gonna present the draft so that you have a full understanding of what the draft is talking about. In November, this is the current timeline as I've said it. This is your timeline though, so you can adjust the timeline as we go through it, because this is gonna become yours after we finish presenting it. Um, the, the kind of the skeleton of the timeline is in November, we do a public comment regarding the draft. Um, so after this meeting, um, barring a few edits that we've already found some edits in, in this draft I would, we mark those up send them out to the uh, finance committees and the select boards of the towns for them to kind of look through mm -hmm. allow them to come on november meeting to give their feedback of where how they feel about the plan and any comments there again we can adjust the plan at that meeting for a december vote um, that's kind of the timeline so you'll have this you'll have this document for about two and a half months before having to vote on it as you also kind of digest it um, we as the committee really do there's a lot of stuff in here that is not every day um, you know the committee members aren't dealing with every day we talk about different types of borrowing and, and different definitions and that kind of thing so don't hesitate to ask questions we've had the opportunity of meeting a dozen times asking Joe the same question dozen times um, as he helped us through those kind of things and there's been different level of expertise there's sometimes there's you know you but what I'm trying to say is make sure you ask questions if you have questions because I'm sure somebody else at the table may have it and I want you to feel comfortable about it um, so I'm going to start by um, skipping to page 
five. And just talking about the, the we are going to talk about the seven different parts to this report. Okay. One of the things is is that kind of has thrown. Um, there's a lot of different capital projects on here, but the track kind of stands alone as its own problem because of the cost of it alone. Um, being a, you know again an envelope number of being around six hundred thousand dollars. So. With that in this project, we knew that we were going to have to secure some sort of funding outside of our normal funding sources and assessments of towns, such as looking at loans. Um, addition to number two is addressing the backlog of other capital needs. And this is again the cornerstone of why this group was put together. Um, this building has is 20 years old, and things are 20 years old and are starting to um, approach end of life or being worn out. Um, and so um, we had a, a list of capital needs. Um, and then we also, within those, um, we also have needs that, um, you know, are unscheduled major expenditures coming up. Um, so we want to make sure we address those needs. Um, and then we also want to address the other smaller projects of, that were deferred maintenance, okay? And I want to be careful how we use the term deferred maintenance. Um, every building, every municipality at some level unless they are privately funded or um, are doing very very well as a municipality um, have some sort of deferred maintenance um, you know, things where you know, we put off spending in certain areas um, to address it later down the line to keep certain programs going and that kind of thing so um, I just want to go there um, we also want to create a maintenance program moving forward over the next 10 years and beyond um, and in doing so, creating a capital planning subcommittee to oversee this as it moves forward. Okay, and then the, and the last part, um, which is shouldn't be, it should be best for last, is creating financial policies around what the subcommittee is working on, language that is common um, for the school committee to use moving forward. Okay, so that's kind of an outline overall of the seven parts of this report. So we're going to dive right in to the other part, and at any time, again, committee members or if I've misspoken on anything, if you want to even add color as a color commentator, <laughs> feel free to, to jump in. Yeah, I hate those guys. <laughs> well, um, pretend it's radio. All right. Um, so the first thing we are looking at is um, to fund the track resurfacing project, okay? Um, and as I said, the estimated cost is about $600,000. Um, $600,000. Um, if we were to, clearly that, that size of a project could not come out of END or other general funds. So um, we looked over several meetings, um, different ways to borrow for this project. And what we came forward with is um, recommending and financing the, through a series of one-year notes under the Houts notes notes program and this is where I told Joe I'm going to hand it over to him just because he'll be able to answer questions a little bit better on this part. Um, talk to us a little bit about what it means to do a note as opposed to uh, other types of loan which we may be more familiar as like a... <clears throat> okay, um, the, um, the regional school district is allowed to borrow, that's in your, that's in statute, that's also in your, your agreement and uh, although it may talk about bonds whenever uh, you hear language about bonds, it, it implicitly includes um, authorization to borrow money with notes. The distinction between a note and a bond is that a, a note is a, for a borrowing period of one year or less. It can be for one month, it can be for four months, it can be for 12 months and, we, we, and we're looking at uh, 12 month uh, borrowings here and in fact uh, a series of 12 months borrowings each one is um, essentially a freestanding borrowing uh, so the value of notes are that at the end of the term uh, you're paying interest and you pay off the note or you can pay interest and pay no principal and renew the note for the next year and you can do that prudence is that each time you renew a note, you, you take down principal somewhat, so that at, an un, at the end of a particular period of time that you, you decide you don't want to borrow anymore, the, the borrowing amount, the principal, is down to zero. 
So uh, notes have the advantage of having that kind of flexibility. Uh, each time you borrow, you can borrow a different amount. Uh, even if you wanted to, uh, you could roll into bonds. And the distinction between a bond, bond is for a term of longer than one year. Uh, typically, towns will borrow for, and, uh, for five years or for 10 or 15 or 20. Uh, those are the, the, the usual you know, gaps. The benefit of going with a series of notes with the which the state allows um, through the State House Notes Program, and a lot of regional school districts borrow through this program, uh, it's operated out of the Department of Revenue's Division of Local Services. If you were to choose to, to borrow with, no, let's say compare a 10-year bond to a series of 10-year, one-year notes, the bond will require um, will be a higher interest rate. Uh, it will be a, a predetermined uh, debt service, which could be a flat amount for the entire period, or it could be, if it's a called level principal, uh, the, the total payment will start higher than that, that, that normal mortgage type of payment, and it'll end up lower at the end of the term. But in order to bond, uh, you'll need a bond rating, um, that, that's going to cost money, three, four thousand uh, dollars. You'll need a bond counsel, you'll need a financial advisor, and um, you already have audits, so I think having an audit done would not be a big issue. But uh, there are built in costs. Uh, a lot of communities will, will build that cost into the borrowing, so you don't really put cash out for it, but now you're going to be paying more for that amount because interest payments are going to compound on that. So uh, it was decided that to save money, to have flexibility, uh, that a series of uh, one-year notes, renewable after each year, to pay for the track uh, made the most sense, would be the most cost-effective for the, for the district and for the member towns. Uh, what else can I tell you? Yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it on bonds. Um, it's a very simple process, and it's... That, that, as I say, operates through the State House Notes program, and um, it, it's, it's easily uh, just a matter of applications. Questions on that? And, and typically that's, you know, on, on projects that aren't like $12 million <coughs> at a shot. You know, you can do, the, the notes tend to be smaller or not. I mean, they can be anything, but they tend to be a small, like for the elementary school roof, we found instead of doing a, a bond, one-year notes over a series of several years, we pay that off. It was, it was a lot of money, but it wasn't, you know, thirty million dollars. Uh, you know, a new school, so that you could you really wouldn't do over one-year notes typically. Yeah, because it's such a, a lot, a, lot, a large amount to pay off for a year. Or so, All right, everybody comfortable with that first step? It took us a long time to get to this first step, so <laughs> yeah, that's why yeah. it's, it's like it's, it's over in thirty. It's over in three minutes. Um, yeah, yeah. Here we got it. Are there any negatives? <laughs> Are there any negatives with uh, doing notes? Well, uh, the only negative I think is that uh, the rates could go up. Uh, if you've got a bond, you're locked in to a rate. Uh, and um, we were talking, who was I talking with about rates? Oh, this was another town, sorry. Uh, but uh, the rates could go up. And in fact, the, the, the Fed is increasing rates lately. And, and uh, it's hard to say over the course of five or 10 years where those rates might go. But, but rates for notes are always lower than rates for bonds, which are uh, by one and a half or two percentage points. Uh, so it's, it's a tough call. In, in that respect, it's a little, but if it were to happen that bond rates went significantly low, and it, the logic and the common sense was, well, rather than do these notes and risk this inflation of, uh, of interest rates, you can roll into a bond anytime you want uh, from these notes. So uh, that flexibility is there. And you'd always be able to get one at the end of the At the end of the term, of the at, the, at the end of the one year term, if, if that note is taken for one year, which I expect it would be. Another one would always be available. Always yeah. Keep, yeah. Just keep if you roll from a note into a bond, are all those fees the yeah, same? Yeah, they kick in. They yeah. do kick in. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> just, just add in as we start talking about debt and debt service and the styles of debt. 
part of the charge that this working group had was to identify on the original master list what tasks, projects, capital, backlog actually warranted debt. Debt in its life cycle of a piece of equipment or a life cycle of an asset are, are really should be disconnected. You shouldn't take debt on something that has 10 years of life on it or 20 years. We all know that inherently, but it gets caught up in a big rollout of a gigantic master plan. So the group was really sensitive about what kind of funding mechanisms can go in to support a capital program or a major <coughs> maintenance program that were outside of the debt umbrella. And you'll see that in, in future elements. We can always come back, but any other on the one year notes? Right. So that was, you know, first talking about addressing the track, but additionally, we have a backlog of capital needs, okay? And so this is going right in, um, right into what Scott was talking about, was that we had a, we looked at the general list of needs and we categorized them to category one, two, and three. Um, there was, if you follow any of our meeting notes, there was actually a subcategory of 1A at one point where we were really trying to list the number of things um, that really counted as a capital improvement and not um, something that didn't have the lifespan. And that's where the importance of a definition later on, when you start talking about part of the building of this plan is to build for 10 years also transparency to town, towns in transparency so they can see what's coming because they have their own um, um, bills and, and plans moving forward. And so that, you know, um, it's meeting that. So we have one, two, and three. One is the first year. Two is the second year, and two and three is the second year. Um, yes, right, I said that right. Yeah. Um, and we are looking to do year one, um, the year one to be covered with notes as well. And you can see if you go on to page seven right there in the second pair, was the first full paragraph, um, with the expenditure of $220,500 beginning year two, uh, year one rather, and it, the cost goes into year two. So we're looking at knocking down, um, we're taking care of some of those immediate expenses with a note borrow as well. So we have, we have the track as a major one, and then these other ones to, to, get us, um, to get us going on fixing those issues that are around the school. Uh, yeah, I, I, comment on that? Yeah, I, I think what, I, what we are looking at is the total cost of um, those priorities, those cap, and those cap, those backlog of capital needs, if they're not addressed, they become deferred maintenance. They don't go away, they just get pushed down the road. And, and, uh, and what typically happens, of course, is when you push these kind of things down the road, they get more expensive to deal with uh, later on. So if you have the means, it's always wise to try and, and take care of them. But um, the, the highest priorities were, it was, it was uh, expected that those would be taken care of in year one. Uh, the next priorities would be taken care of year two and the next in year three. There's flexibility to move those around if you wanted to. Uh, but the, the total number on that was uh, some, somewhere in the order of $500,000 total. And so the, the conclusion was that, well, if the towns were assessed for their share of $500,000, that's a whole lot more than borrowing and being assessed only for the debt service on paying for $500,000 worth of improvement. So the idea was to try and keep the cost down uh, to, to um, with the notes, you have the flexibility, you wouldn't be borrowing the entire $500,000 in year one. Um, the the uh, school district would, would seek a, an authorization, a borrowing authorization for the total amount, but the actual issuance of those notes would occur as needed. So it's not like you're paying uh, full freight for money that you're not using yet, it's sitting in the bank, so that wouldn't happen. And that's also like how fast we can get the project done, too. I mean, if you're front-loading a lot of this stuff, and there'll be a lot of activity in the first few years, if it's a little more manageable, you couldn't do it all in one year, it's hard to manage yeah. that much work. <clears throat> and if you if you skim just to page twelve, you can, if that's where the listing of those priority year one 
um, needs are. You can see that they're very, it's not like we're building a building and then all the parts that go to the building. It's like a lot of different areas that are not connected to one another. So when you talk about different projects, um, if you don't, um, if you don't get to one of those projects in, in, in a timely fashion of that year, you don't have to take the loan out or the note out on that particular project. The entire list is on page 20. Uh, your, uh, page 12 is the first year, it's the first priority one uh, items. Page 20 uh, shows all of those uh, backlog uh, items. One was listed twice, so we'll, we'll take care of that. <coughs> one was listed twice, and there yeah. was no amount put next to the curtains, and that will be yeah. that was we'll, that area. Yeah, that was the one of the edits that we have to make. So, um, I guess the only th uh, thing I, I would say, as we're talking about these different kind of um, expenditures, is that uh, this committee, and I and I'll say this committee worked very well and very hard, and was very diligent, was just really zeroed in on everything that that could come up. The, the goal was to put together a program that would address all the needs over, the, over a 10-year period. And so that the, at the end of the 10-year period, the school would be essentially on automatic pilot with its, uh, with its uh, investment in maintenance and repair and, and future capital. So this is really a 10-year program, uh, and that's, why, that's the way we were looking at it, how to reduce costs, keep costs down over that period. Um, so, just uh, that's what everything is sort of pointing toward is, is completion in a 10 year window. <clears throat> All right, so, in the, so that is the what we're looking at for the borrowing of money. Right, so I'm trying to close off one section because it gets confusing when you start talking about the two numbers together. Because what we did again is we looked at the full 10 years and all the issues that are listed in the 10 years and how can we address all of them and not just borrow for some of them, have a, we'll worry about that in five years. That we really try to get away you know, with how can we plan at this point with this borrower and not have to come back in three, four, or five years for another borrower. So um, the next part of this is the creation of a stabilization fund. Um, we have a stabilization fund on record. There's one voted in place, but it's not funded. And basically, a capital stabilization fund is basically we're putting money aside to fund these projects. And really, the number that we came up with was about $150,000 a year to be put into capital stabilization. Now, immediately, there might be a, a, a thought that, wow, that's a lot of money. Where are we going to get that money? But we have been acting with, um, um, with um, I'm losing my words here, with any excess that we have, we have been putting um, purchases through from E&D um, to pay for these things to the, to the sum of $100,000 plus. And so we're not too far off um, creating a fund like this in the way we've been doing some spending. Um, I kind of started and you kind of finished. Uh, yeah, it. Um, I, I would say again to look at page 21 this time and at the, the, the top column, these are, uh, after talking with Bob Lesko, the facilities director, uh, these are our expenditures that he, he, he three, right? Uh, I got 21 on my draft. Uh, uh, yeah, we're at 23. 23 is full. 23 is It's the second page of the. Um, it's, it says unscheduled needs stabilization. Yeah, page 24 for all of us. Another edit. We need to all get on the same page. Yeah. 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 These are Bob says that these are these are expenditures yeah. are that are going to have to be made. He couldn't tell us exactly when they were going to have to be made. And so uh, the the column on the far right totals the the, the estimated cost up, and that's a million five or, or so. And that's over the course of 10 years at 150 grand, that's where the million five comes out, or the $150,000 is generated from that number. Now, it could be that none of the stabilization money would be spent for two, three, four years because the need doesn't arise, so that money accumulates. Uh, it could also happen that this, the, the you people, as a committee, decide, well, we don't want to wait 
but th for this thing to break down, let's schedule it for a particular time, and you schedule that cost in when there's enough balance in the stabilization fund to cover it. So the hope is that this is a savings account and that it's going to cover uh, these major expenditures when the need arises or when you schedule them to be uh, addressed. How are we doing? With me? Yeah. The idea was not it was not to borrow for these because we just didn't know when they were going to arise. Um, okay. And the idea that when we put this plan together is how do you forecast for ten years? And when you're looking at this list, understand that this list is a is a is a fluid list in the sense that they could change from year to year. Outside of year one, which is what we're going to be moving forward. Um, you know, asking the committee to move forward with, the following years, those priorities could shift. Um, and that's the reason what we're gonna talk about later about creating mm -hmm. policies and creating a ongoing capital subcommittee so that there's oversight to, okay, we're shifting the list. Okay, what's going on here? Um, you know, why is there a shift in the list? Why is there a change in priorities? That kind of thing. So there is some oversight um, and transparency to that. There was that, because as we, you know, as we all know when we did, the long list was was given. There's something that's like that looks that's working fine right now. Why would you go and you know the walk-in freezer? We know that's going to go, but it, we might get three more years out of it. We might as well get three years out of it before uh, we go and fix that. Or the walk -in I'm not sure I understand. All right, and, and I would say it, it's we know that it's going to change. I mean, it's designed to change every year. If you look at the four pages in a row that are the four towns assessments, for instance, we know that that percentage that the, of, of enrollment that the assessment is based on changes every year. And in fact, the number right here that's on your list is last year's number. We already have this year's number, and so the one that you'll see in November will be reflected as changes. The good news for Conway is it's going down a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, the rest of the town. <laughs> right, so you know, in case anybody's question on that, the October 1 numbers came out, and this was going out last week, and so we don't actually that number until that day so um, that will um, change those numbers and as you just said these numbers will change the assessments of town changes every year and so that may adjust slightly as with this town so, population. same situation if we actually do get to re-regionalizing if we get to the regional agreement ever that would just filter into this yeah if the structure actually changed this is not like right now it sounds like if the percentages to change I've obviously been talking too much today. <laughs> um, if the percentages to the town change it changes but what if the regionalization formula changes is that the same thing that just filters into our math for this so you you're saying something above and beyond the current uh, the right. agreement itself changes if, if anything changes in that that would change the, the way we do math for it would, percentages, it would, it if would you just were automatically filter. Are you saying, like, let's say we regionalized? Right. right. Um, you probably would put language into the, and you can jump in here, and then you put language into how you would deal with current debt. Okay. Up, and, and, yeah. and you would, it'd be one of the things you'd I negotiate within the contract. You could, <laughs> you could say we're going to base it on the secondary because that's what we committed to in the beginning, right. or you could say we need to look at the full. No. I imagine you probably would say it would be based on each town's participation in yeah. the okay, middle and secondary. Okay, so that would have to be filtered forward. into the regional agreement right. as opposed to just automatically yeah. taking Because yeah. yeah. I've seen other <coughs> other schools that are regionalizing do have debt, and, and, and part of that is that. language. How do they how do they deal with building ownership? How do they deal with debt? How do, each one is kind of outlined. Does okay. the regional agreement address capital debt? I don't no. think we have it's capital not, in there. Our, our regional agreement is we not. We don't have anything capital in there. there. I thought that was one of our problems. Yeah. That we never defined it. Yeah. Still good? Thank you. Yeah. Gary, you good? Like the, you know, as we talk about the debt piece and some identifying some of the definitions around the assets, whether it's capital or maintenance or major maintenance, all that. The goal of the group, I think, was to ensure that the regional school committee had a framework for some tools that were beyond what you currently have is end of year spending in the annual maintenance line item and then debt. The goal here was to have three areas of impact. And I think that this year demonstrated that with some formed articles that were presented and, and pieces were funded. A little bit of debt that we're talking about for the, the coming year. 
some specifics with respect to uh, capital and all of the creation of a piece of capital stabilization in, in the wheelhouse of just the Frontier Regional School Committee to execute inside of that framework for an unforeseen support of this plan were the, were the goal. That was the goal going out of here. So don't get hung up especially on debt. This is three. This is a, a three-legged uh, stool to support a capital plan for the school. And hopefully we'll spend as much time on that as we talk about debt and numbers. Because frankly, it's hard to project out after year five. You don't mm -hmm. have a predictive maintenance model. You have no idea that sound is going to stop and when. You know, you just you're not, you're not you're not that dialed in yet. Hopefully, you will be after year five or six or seven. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm on page eight at this point in the middle there. Um, the next thing we also recognized in, in, um, is that you know we we've known this that we've been underfunding um, the maintenance repair program at Frontier Regional. Um, currently, we um, Put about fifty thousand um, dollars to that, and the building is now twenty years old, and more than fifty thousand dollars worth of stuff is breaking um, or coming to end of life. Breaking it sounds like somebody's doing something wrong. I'm going to get that out there. Um, and so, basically, if you look at the plan, you'll see that after year five, um, we're looking to up that number by another fifty thousand dollars. So, putting a hundred thousand dollars toward maintenance. Now, again, these numbers. You know, we can be, as each year goes by, we will have a list of our needs and we can adjust those numbers. But we're projecting forward, um, looking at that some of that has to, some of these repairs that we have, we have to in the future knock off as they come up as part of our, as part of a maintenance plan. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I covered that pretty yeah. straightforwardly. All right. Um, there is something that you will see um, is contingency and oversight um, in some of those numbers. We've added, um, we've added in is some of these projects are going to need someone to oversee those those projects, and we're not sure if our current um, current or future um, buildings buildings maintenance and grounds um, director would be the one to oversee that, um, based on the scope of the project. We we hope and wish that we can keep that cost in house, but what if we do have to go out? So we have these, what we put in in contingency and oversight. And there may be some things where there's some extra costs on certain things. So um, we put a little, a small buffer, it's a little bit larger in the early projects because of the size of the projects, but then it gets down. Um, do you want to go through the numbers of how that, <clears throat> I can try to spit that out, but I probably know. Yes. Um, trying to see where I have that. Um, essentially, it's, it's best guess. You know, it, it, because we don't know uh, what projects or purchases are, are and this is also contract management too. Mm -hmm. It's a, making sure that the uh, the work that was supposed to be done is done correctly and in, in accordance with the specs of the contract. Uh, and and in year one, the track is involved. Uh, uh, in year uh, in in subsequent years, it's hard to tell what project. Think about that; um, those projects that are that are be, be funded through stabilization, the ones that are unscheduled but are going to happen. We don't know when those are going to happen. Uh, and if if five of them happen in one year, then there might be some oversight that that requires more dollars than if you have a year where none of them happen. So I, I, I essentially did a best guess test based on my experience with projects, and, and uh, it's a number that. Could be in, in the first year, it's like twenty-four thousand dollars, and and then it, it because of track, and then it and then it goes down into about two and a half percent of one hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is seventy-five hundred dollars a year. And I should say that's that's a best guess. The point was to um, not overlook the potential cost there, and not be surprised later by a a cost that really should have been. Um, addressed and, and, and Fred had made that point uh, a few times, and, and so we we incorporated this this line item in here. Uh, so uh, it's it's really trying to be trying to be sort of thorough uh, about all of this. I think what's important on that is that if we don't need it, we're not going to spend it. It's not money that <clears throat> oh we didn't spend this money, so now I can go I can go buy a new doorknob for the classroom across the hall. That money is going to be used. Is, and then it has the oversight of the, um, the subcommittee to see what is, 
is being done on that. So that, again, anytime we had a line item, we wanted to make sure that um, if we're going to be going, um, if we're going to be going to towns looking for money and doing that kind of thing, there is proper oversight and um, of those expenditures. And that's, what a, that's what a lot of the definitions and policies are really. Uh, we worked a lot on those too. That uh, to, to just to make sure that what we say at town meeting is actually what the administration has to do, and that so that the voters at town meeting can really see that 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 it's not one of those. Oh, you're. We give you the money and then you do it at a die. But if you look, we're really locking in how this is going to work with the definitions and the policies. Oh, you were right. Oh. <coughs> All right. All right. We're good so far? Yep. All right. I'm going to have a skip a page because we're going to come back and talk about. I don't want to start talking about the subcommittee and creating a planning subcommittee. I want to kind of go roll through. Um, the capital plan because we've been talking about the capital with this shift gears and then go back and make it confusing. So I'm moving us to page 11 and this is our recommendations um, for next year. Okay. Um, and the first one is uh, looking right down with me on this is looking to improve the, the fund to track the amount of $600,000 to finance the project. Please know that $600,000. Is, is, is an estimate. We still have to get the, um, we still have to put out the bid to see what that actual cost is. And so, um, <coughs> I'm just saying that out loud in a public meeting because that number is a change. Um, and then um, looking at funding for the priorities of one, two, and three capital backlog needs, again, that we talked about. So, we're kind of summarizing here. And then looking to appropriate um, $150,000 from your END. Um, most likely would that have come from to to fund that stabilization account because once we start putting it there then we're going to be showing that we're um, having faith in that um, portion and then um, currently there's a fifty seven thousand fifty eight thousand dollars um, we have a list of deferred maintenance that we felt that probably could be handled inside the current frontier budget without <coughs> adding that to the debt within that first year so finding the funds and we've already so this is a living document we're already working on some of the things listed in here um, we talk about the, uh, the, the what's that the tractor was in here and that was already funded the tractor one of the tractors was in here it was, was in here and already funded and then um, some security things we're already working on that you've already appropriated funding to um, so those will come off that'll change that Again, that's where you get kind of a fluid number um, on the projects. There's going to be oversight from that. That's up. Um, all right, and then um, the number five is the approval um, of fifty thousand dollars from available funds to fit, um, facility maintenance and repair. So you can kind of see the the numbers below. Any comment on those numbers? Yeah, I, I, I just offer a couple of comments. One is that uh, this plan does not account for any kind of outside funding, grants, donations, anything like that. Um, those could come in and offset a lot of these costs. And the other thing is the $50,000, the item number five there, that's essentially already in your budget. So, um, and, and that's another adjustment I, I have to make. Uh, that's that's already accounted for in your budget, and it does not represent uh, additional money. So that's going to bring down the overall number a little bit for for the town. So uh, whatever your share of that is. So those two things. Uh, the 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 deferred maintenance. You know that's that's probably a lot of flexibility. Bob Lesko talked in terms of two different kinds. One was uh, a deferred maintenance item. Uh, it's capital. It needed to be addressed. It wasn't. But you can solve the problem just by throwing a dollar amount at it, a, a, a finite dollar amount. He said there are other kinds of deferred maintenance that that are that require uh, an annual expenditure to keep just to keep that function going or that that equipment <coughs> operating. Uh, that's a little bit of an amorphous number. We don't know where that number is going to go over the long term, but for now, we put it in there uh, each year uh, the way that uh, he thought made the most sense. And 
I expect that some of those issues could be resolved with a one-time expenditure as well. But uh, we don't have those numbers. And that, that's something you'd have to, have to get in the future down the road to, to, I, to, uh, to understand what kind of investment that would be. Um, I'd like to just say something, I, I've got to leave in a few minutes, but uh, all these specific projects here were, were put in to support the dollar cost uh, and, and, the, and the program, uh, and I guess the intent was not to go back to the four towns and go through each item here to see whether it's needed or not, or whether the cost is, is appropriate. Because you never, if, if that did happen, you're never going to reach agreement on the four towns. So that's not the intent. So when you go back to your towns, don't give them the list of the what 50 projects and say, okay, which one do you want to fund, and which ones don't you want to fund? Because that's not the intent. Right. Uh, that was in here to support the program, and then the subcommittee is going to decide uh, which of these, according to the schedule, will be funded. And that's what the committee up to now has decided that these projects are reasonable projects to look at. Uh, we've looked, we had field reviews, inspections of some of this work to actually see whether it was needed or not. It was, just wasn't a list that was presented to us and said, do you agree or not? We've looked at it, we spent some time analyzing and, and the priority of it. So so keep that in mind when you go back to the towns that we're not looking to look at each item individually. Point for the second. Yeah, to build up to build up price point, vision year three or four, tasks completed in prior year, capital line item proposed year, stop. Demonstrate success. Still what you can do again. And fall in it just becomes if I use the word program, if I use the word program. But program, program, program. Yeah. Not what scary tried to do. I am the scary trick kind. Not what scary treads are being replaced. Not where you're Are they better or are they green? Are they better or are they green? <laughs> green is cheaper. Why do we go red? <laughs> <laughs> Change the school colors. Change the red, white, blue. That's not true fact. That was a joke. All right. I don't know, I don't know what trade was on sale that week. All right. Um, all right. So we're in the we're at the bottom of 11. Yeah, we're in the bottom of 11. I'm trying to figure out where I want to go from here. This is, because um, um, I adjusted a little bit. So you're looking at 12. That's an overview, and that's exactly what Fred was talking about. That's that's for this committee to look over. This is not going to be um, showing our thought and foresight through it. But it's not that it's not going to be packaged that way um, when we bring it forward to town. It'll be the overall number of what's been decided by um, by the committee. Um, and understand that the the subcommittee has given you the recommendation. Right. So a recommendation from a subcommittee that was made up of four select board and four of your members um, moving forward. So there is a recommendation for that year one following um, what we hope will be a model moving forward. Um, all right, so um, I'm looking at uh, Joe just going through the numbers overall. As we get into each town, um, any comment or things to be? Oh, the individual. Because I think I think it gets. I think the next step we're at is the how that each town is affected by. Um, again, the assessment the assessment numbers are based on last year's numbers, so we'll get the new numbers put in. You know, so basically, what's going to happen again? Going back to review, we've already have some notes on the side that we have to kind of update as this is again a live document. I will send out. Um, the next copy, you're going to be in the tricky position of de destroying your old copy, making sure you're always using the fresh copy. Um, but make sure that the towns get the, the latest up-to-date numbers. So their numbers they're going to get are going to look different because it's going to be a different assessment number. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to go off what we're going to project moving forward this year off October 1. Joe, and uh, would I let be off if I was to characterize year one through five or six as kind of the exercise of the debt down and then year five, six, the escalation of the contribution to capital stabilization on an annual basis. So you actually don't have a lot of overlap to the, to the, to the towns, right? We plan on buying debt down 
the same time, we plan on increasing and then finding a, a stable level. 150,000 is in here right now as a placeholder. That may change with some successes over that decade. Okay? We're, not, we're not talking, the, the proposal isn't to have debt and the subsequent assessment on top of the maintenance budget which exists. One is to decline, one is to begin to backfill, and then that becomes the, the stable part. And if something big happens, sure, you have to have debt again. Totally get it. But again, the, this, some of the definitions support not borrowing and funding through a capital stabilization assessment to each, each of the municipalities. It's essentially the capital line item in the budget. I think he was nodding yes. Were you nodding yes tonight? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know, I thought you were thinking yeah. about something else. I totally get it, but. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you, in terms of how you structure this in an actual budget document, mm -hmm. uh, there, there are some, some um, options. And, uh, but no matter what option, in terms of presentation, uh, this committee decides it wants to, to uh, pursue, the towns will still get a bottom line. And they're still voting a bottom line. They're not. they uh, It's not likely that they're going to be able to pick and choose which capital projects they want and are not. Um, those projects can be listed. Their costs can be listed. Um, but it's it's all part of the bottom line and uh, for approval. And I think it's important that the committee, the, the subcommittee, knows, and with the you know the, the school committee moves forward with this. Um, that after summer, we still have work to do to be able to summarize this into something that the average citizen can have an understanding of what we're doing here. Because there's no way they're going to digest all this. I mean, we're going to have to market it in a way so they have an understanding. This is a 10-year plan. This is what we're looking to do. And so that, um, and so that, that is some work down the road. We understand that. So, um, well, the first thing we may want to do is disband that subcommittee and then all of a sudden a few more nights off. Um, the, really, the truth is there's going to be a, uh, there's going to be some work on trying to make sure how do we, not just sell it to sell, but inform the towns of what the what the idea is, um, so they have an understanding, so that hopefully they agree with our logic. Um, um, hopefully related question about the track. <clears throat> I've only I've heard pushback on the track for being so expensive, and I've been trying to explain it. And I just think that when we start talking about the track. Um, we need to be very um, transparent and, and have meetings on that because people can't wrap their head around why it's so expensive. Seriously, it used to just be gravel and you ran and you fell down and you stuck on your knee and there was none of this cushion stuff and all that. So I just say if going forward, we really need to explain that because that's where I see the pushback okay. is not having that information out there to the public. And we had talked about we could create a uh, link on their web page to show photos and, right. and do an explanation okay. of, um, of the track itself. We but get for those, it. Yeah, you but get it, right? People, okay, other so. people don't get it. I get it. I right. totally get it. But I Just a quick really summary, because we're on camera. I'll do it in 30 right. seconds. You were given money, not given, appropriated money by the school committee to resurface the track. We brought in a vendor to give us a quote, um, and give us the, to prepare the bid for the track. And they said, you can't just replace the surface of this track. The underlayment, that's the concrete or asphalt underneath the track is deteriorating. Okay. So we will put a new, we'll put lipstick on this, but it's not, it's gonna run right off. Okay. And we won't guarantee it over a year. And so then we said, oh, we gotta do, how much is it to do half a million dollars or more? So that's where we're at with that $600,000 kind of range of where that is. So um, we brought two separate companies out, the two major ones that do all the colleges and universities in the area. Um, so, you know, it was they weren't, they, they weren't in it to try to get more from us. They were. They, I wonder they were if some of it's in some doesn't come from the word resurfacing, because that's what it, it sounds like we're doing is putting in a tub. That's not what we're doing. Right. No, no. That's this true. is yeah. replacing. Yeah. You know, we're we're in there. We may want to choose another word. Yeah. 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 When you resurface your driveway, it's a couple thousand dollars. When you reconstruct your driveway. It's ten thousand yeah. dollars. You yeah. just you redo the base and then you put the top. That's a really good way. Uh, I think we, we talked about, the, about about this a lot, about the necessity that, that because the track is such a big single item that's driving the need to acquire debt, um, 
<coughs> that it really has to focus on the track, that, um, that there is discussion about getting the, the coaches to talk to the sports writers and get about why it's so expensive and get that in the paper. There is discussion about the need for presentations about how big the, the track program is, how it's not just another sport, how... Right. Um, it is also a, somewhere else, right? it, is, it is also a giant teaching station. Right. Yeah. It's not just for the track, for the girls and boys track teams right. to run around. It is a teaching station that using the physical education curriculum. It's part part of the operation. So you know all that has to be part of the dog and pony show that we put out to sell this thing. So what is it used for besides the track meet? So, so, that, so that said, the track is cast a long shadow over what looked like the backlog of other work. Sure it does. Yeah. And one, one of the reasons for calling it out as a separate authorization and almost as a standalone project, when we talk about the track, then we talk about everything. Else. And that was part of an active discussion. Right. Here. And, and just to, to let people know from yeah. the perspective of, at the time, I was principal then before where I'm at now. Um, was my concern was the track would overshadow the other needs of this building right. and then you have a new track and still a building with a lot of things that are that need to be addressed and so that's why we did those priority one two and three and really kind of go through to make sure those don't get lost because because well it's a, it is a teaching station there's a lot of other teaching stations in the building as well that um, you know we're sitting in one of them that, that needs some, some tender loving care after 20 years uh, so all right I have another meeting Thank you, Scott. Thank, Thank you for everything you've done on our subcommittee. We should have said that to Fred when I didn't realize he was leaving. Um, Scott Cameron. Yeah. Uh, What's that? Yeah, Scott Cameron. There you Thanks, go, Fred. Fred. You're watching us later. All right. Um, we are going to move to the other two portions of the three kind of the three part, as Scott kind of mentioned, what this plan is all about. Um, we can come back to ask any questions later on on the, on the other stuff, um, but I'm just kind of saying that's. Where we're at. Is everybody good? Yep. This is your your class. Just part of it. Um, one of them is um, as we kind of talked about, and um, if you're on page 22, or 26. what? Or 26. Or 26, if you have the loan copy that Trevor made. Um, <laughs> oh, we have a lot of blank pages. Oh, that's, that's, what it is. Yeah. that's for you to take notes. That's right. That's All right. right. <laughs> Um, basically is creating a capital planning subcommittee moving forward um, to do the work that this committee um, did this year hopefully in a much shorter model um, and basically it goes through and breaks down the what the composition could look like um, and um, basically I'm just going to run through it in its, in, its um, in our recommendation here the subcommittee should be appointed by the Frontier Regional School Committee. It should be accountable report its recommendation to the full uh, Regional School Committee. Um, the subcommittee should be have nine members. Four shall be select um, select board members from each town or designee, neither of whom shall be then a sitting member of the Frontier Regional School Committee. Um, and then the Regional School Committee shall appoint four of its own members to the subcommittee. Yeah, Phil actually wanted to bring that up as a conversation. We'll do that at the end, okay, Phil? <laughs> um, no, I'm serious, though. We can bring it up as a discussion. Um, and then um, the regional school district superintendent or designee shall serve as a ninth um, subcommittee member and shall serve as its chair. Um, again, that could be, you know, again, we were running off of the model we ran off of this year, um, which we thought was successful. Um, the definition of a capital expenditure is defined as a purchase of a project with a minimum cost of $10,000 with an anticipated life of five years or more. Um, all right, and then and the subcommittee may include or exclude a proposed expenditure if its judgment of its members is common sense um, and practicality so did too. Um, the second meeting shall receive from the regional school district superintendent by December 1. So basically, the, model, the plan's looking at looking at from December 1 to January 15th is when this committee would regularly meet and to be able to, to go through this kind of work. It's not this full year drawn out thing. Um, hopefully, once we have good, um, a good foundation in place, we can address those needs in that, in that time frame. You know, we could start it earlier if um, we felt maybe the first couple of years we could even choose to start it earlier. Um, so that means to give it away so it can be successfully moving forward. But that's kind of the, the time frame, so it holds the, the committee responsible to follow its own rules here. Um, 
The duties of the subcommittee shall include, but not be limited to, determine the status of previously approved projects and purchases, um, develop evaluation criteria, evaluate prior prioritize requests, assess the district's financial capacity, identify funding sources, including potential grants, donations, and other outside sources, um, report recommendations with the financing, the finance, financing plan, maintain an inventory of existing facilities, equipment and vehicles, and development, develop and annually update the long range capital plan. So as you can see, as we get to year eight, we're not just gonna wait until year 10 to say what's gonna happen in year 11. <laughs> we're gonna say, no, it's outside the plan. We don't, we don't go that far ahead. So, you know, this is gonna be a committee that's gonna continually probably be looking, be looking at that 10 year plan as it, you add a year on as you go forward. Obviously it's gonna look very different um, outside of the, the numbers we gave you, but um, that kind of thing. Um, I also want to just kind of emphasize that the fifth point is remember all the expenditures in here, because you know someone's going to say, well, have you guys looked into grants? Have you looked into energy savings? I mean, we're looking at HVAC on here. Is there any kind of you know ways that we can um, save money here? We're looking at the most conservative um, uh, numbers being put forward. Okay, um, we expect to have <laughs> grants. We expect to get um, you bring these these numbers down but we have to come in with the highest number so that um, if we fail to do so, that we still move forward. Um, um, if so requested by the uh, regional school district superintendent, the subcommittee may assign one or more of its members to assist with project oversight, contract management, which may involve some or all front end acquisition stage and implementation of phase and or follow up. Um, the superintendent should report she included part of the superintendent's report to the towns, um, uh, what's going on with the capital expenditures for the next fiscal year, um, and what has been completed. Um, the subcommittee should develop and maintain annually the long-range capital plan, which we just talked about, um, and understand that the long-range plan is not binding, it changes year to year. So if I say that you know, in the year nine, we're gonna put the pool in, you know, that may not stand next year that would actually fall under capital improvement, but all right, hey, this guy here. All right. Um, so again, creating a, the creating of this 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 group um, within the group, we also see the need to go to the next page. Is looking at capital program policies, um, and I don't know if I should be what if I, you guys want me reading through this to you. I'm being a head shake no, but I want to make no, sure that it's ready. covered, yeah. okay? Yeah. But I do want to go that there are policies, and, and I guess the committee members to kind of jump in if there's any ones that we should be emphasizing as we go through. Um, but there should be policy um, that, that governs the business of the subcommittee um, and so that they don't go off their course of um, what their job description is. Right. Anything in the field? Yeah, I, I think that... Uh, the idea of the subcommittee is is to uh, give the uh, give the towns uh, more direct <coughs> input into into capital. Is that there, there's just direct representation in a single in a single topic area, and uh, because we've got to heard a lot of feedback that towns wanted input in that particular way. So, and the committee also it it's, it follows a town and a city model where there's um, a this subcommittee that. That's all their focus is, and, and they're able to um, follow capital projects and do evaluations and bring recommendations to the larger committee. Uh, the larger uh, district committee obviously has has the ability and the, the authority to, to, to make changes. Um, I would hope that it's always a discussion and, and changes are arrived at by consensus. It's always the better way, uh, better outcome anyways. And, um, and the it's also to uh, to ensure that there is a consistent process from year to year uh, that that um, with the change in membership the change in procedure doesn't take place because it's embedded and that's what the policies go toward uh, it's all about um, it assuring the the member towns that this is a well thought out process that we're trying to create a credible process a consistent process one that creates continuity from year to year, predictability to a certain extent for the towns from year to year. So the committee and the policies combined are really trying to build credibility 
um, for this regional school committee uh, as it presents its capital uh, program and, and moves forward. So that's what these these are, you know, hopefully will will achieve, and, and uh, they can be added to, they can be amended. These are not these are not rigid, etched in stone kind of uh, rules. They're just their guidelines that that you hope that people will abide by from year to year, uh, irrespective of how the membership changes. Um, so I'm just going to go by, I'm just going to say the category heading um, of each kind of policy. I think if there's any questions that come up, just so that um, I can say out loud for the camera and for, I think it brings any questions to people's mind. Um, we have the definition of what is the capital expenditure. I can't come um, bring forward, you know, want to buy Five thousand dollars worth of you know uh, laptops, or Chromebooks. They don't have the lifespan that that meets the criteria. That need. Um, capital planning program. Again, talking about how we um, uh, decide on the uh, what's what's needed in the capital plan. Um, the create the creation of a stabilization fund. Or the reaffirmings of its use. We have one, but at some point we're going to want the committee to vote to, reaff to affirm that it's going to use it. And at some point after we have um, E&D fund that account this year to start it off. So that'll be kind of showing that this plan is moving forward. Um, that may not happen until until we get our approved E&D, which I don't know when that. Is. So you know, through the middle um, you know, mid year of the school year. That is. Um, um, debt management, um, to, again, to uh, kind of looking at, you know, what do we define as um, prudent and consistent management of our debt. Um, um, capital asset tracking, making sure that we are, you know, what are we putting our money towards and making sure we're keeping track of those lifespans and that they're meeting um, what we said they're meeting. And then the categorizations of the capital assets. Uh, again, <coughs> um, looking into our uh, going on to the next page. There, you can kind of see the maintenance costs, major maintenance, and capital improvement, and new construction, so that people have vocabulary to talk about what are the difference between different types of um, costs towards facilities and maintenance. Then the, the last few pages are, I found it very helpful um, as well, the glossary of a lot of the different terms we use tonight. Um, I, first, I think it's helpful for especially uh, for those who um, aren't talking about bond ratings and bond authorizations and bands and Lynn likes this stuff, um, capital and, and whatnot. So that's where we're at. So it's just the, the definitions part that, that he talked about where I think we, the committee viewed this as sort of every bit as important as the assessments or, or whatever, that this is really the armor for the thing that, that when you're asked, and uh, we've all had this experience at town meeting, how do we know that this is what you're really going to do with that money? How do we know? This is how we know. Capital expenditures defined to the Oh yeah, that's a time. That's one of the things we have. Okay, uh, yeah, that's yeah. one of the edits. Yeah. Which 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 one is it? Uh, is it ten thousand. Uh, ten. Ten thousand. Yeah. Ten. So oh, you're doing about the twenty. Yeah. 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 One business is twenty. That was that was the exact same. Someday maybe. People should understand that once the money goes into stabilization, it takes two thirds of vote from the board to take it out of this board to take it out, and it can only be done for those things. Uh, no, yeah, it's for capital. Yeah. That's a statutory thing? Yeah, it is statutory. And, uh, and, and, yeah, and, and I had included um, a fair amount of information about stabilization funds, but since you already had one, I took it out. I can put it back in. I can send it along. It's, uh, there's two things. One is the statute. The other is a memorandum written by Chris Lynch, who's with the uh, Department of elementary and secondary education. Uh, she wrote this a number of years ago that explains how it works. And then I think I had done a summary too. So uh, happy to provide that or should put that back in if you think it would be helpful. Yeah. And Joe, I, I think you said that the school can only have one stabilization yeah. uh, account. Yes. 
Yeah, right. Um, you know, which is different than what most of us do in our town. Yeah, unlike a town, uh, the regional school district doesn't have the authority to set up a special purpose stabilization fund. Um, and so that's. Uh, well, we could ask the legislature permission to establish such a thing. You could. Yeah. I don't know what it would pass. But that's easy. That's easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, you can ask. It's good to know to witness it. But it is important that we would create a capital stabilization account. That money can only, once put the money into it, it can only be used for the capital projects. Um, and um, you know, when you look at rights. what's that? Remember the football lights. Right. Is that what we want to do? Yeah, but I see within our timeline mm -hmm. is that you wouldn't be funding that until the end of the end of you'd be probably be moving that money in at the end of the school year. With an idea of what you're going to use. It. With an idea of yeah, what you're going to get for the following year yeah. and projecting ahead for what you possibly, round numbers of where your E&D would be and how there are other ways that we could, we could fund that account. Mm -hmm. um, again, remember that we, oh, sorry, go ahead. I just want to make sure I get this straight in my head. It's a capital state. It could only be used for capital expenses. Is that because you call it a capital stabilization fund, or is that what statute says? That's, that's what the and statute that's the says. only kind of stabilization fund a school district, reason school correct can have. Yeah. That's. I, am I correct in that? That's I correct. Got it. Well, we could we could ask the legislature permission to to set one up, and it's like a home group petition. They might go along with it. They don't have to. I think what they would be more likely to do is if they thought it was a good idea, they would change the general laws to allow all regional school districts to set up a special purpose stabilization fund, which is, which would make sense because they took that exact action for cities and towns. Right. So, so it, um, I think the likelihood of successes would be better. Well, I agree. Yeah. 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 Those bills are going to have to be filed by a certain date. What bills? New bills in the legislature. Oh, or, uh, uh, I don't know what, what part of the session they're in, whether it's a new session or not. Uh, so it's the second new year. Session year. New session? It's, it's elections this year. So you write it up, I'll give you the stamp. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're asking, so I mean, well, well, it might be a nice idea, that's not what we have no, no, on, on the table yeah. here. <clears throat> this, this, this committee met for a year. We met, tw like, I think, 2019 times. Um, this has just been a, a lot of work and, uh, and a complicated pro process. Um, the, the one thing that I just wish that, I wish that all of you could have been flies on the wall to some extent, um, just to see the leadership that was exhibited, mm -hmm. the competence that was exhibited, um, it would have made, it would have made all of you feel good about warm and the state, yeah, warm and fuzzy about the state of affairs. Yep. So. Or meeting one versus meeting the last meeting. It was very, the whole committee kind of, I gotta say, the committee with different groups and trying to figure out where we're all coming from, really in the end, it works as you couldn't, you can't tell who the school committee members are and who the select board members are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody got on the same page of where we wanted to go. Because they're all in the same. Thing. So, some what's that? Of them are both. Some of them are both. Oh, you guys are still here. Yeah. And we've, we've, been, we've been absolutely blessed with being able to have um, Finance Joe. From FERCOT, yes, um, as as part of this, this, this. Uh, uh, would not be here without. Boy, were we flailing around at at, at first without him. Um, <laughs> and um, I know. You know, the, the, any, next time anybody knocks FERCOT, refer to this guy as as the antidote. Mary has a motion to move this forward. No, no, Bob, 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 Mary was here for you first. <laughs> Since the original agreement is silent, right, on capital, how do these two things fit together? Is that, does that happen? I would say that uh, it is a line item in your operations budget. It's part of the operations budget. And it's divvied up and you open them? And open them. Straight or open. Well, five year phone, yeah. Uh, but I would also say you might consider adding some language about capital in your agreement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, a, that's a thought. Well, we really need a wholesale change in that agreement. There's a lot of places in there. Yeah, 60 odd well, years yeah. old. Yeah. It doesn't differentiate that's between your area of capital or anything. <laughs> it's just one paragraph about money. <laughs> so I have a question for Bill and Mary. Do you like on page eight the commit to sustainable maintenance repair program? 
because when, when they were on the building commission twice, <laughs> and they kept saying, yeah. the town said, we will give you the money to build it, now you need to maintain it. So to see that in writing is huge. But we now we're going to commit. Yeah, as it's been alluded to before, it's, it's one of those things that you, you see some of these maintenance items on the list, but because of somebody needs an override, or somebody has this, or somebody has that, it gets shoved, kick the can down the road, down the road, down the road, and now it, all of a sudden you're five years out and you forget about that one, but here comes the next one. Yeah. Right. You know, and it, all of it, then you have a train wreck. Yeah. Train wreck. Yeah. Right. A small train wreck. But, but I'd right. also yeah. say that well, some things were kicked down the road, we address other things. It wasn't like we saved, and I know you know this, because oh, you've been yeah. on the committee, but I'm saying it for the, just for everybody to remember that things bump other things down the list. You know what I mean? If someone backs into a land post in the middle of the parking lot in the back lot in the, in the winter, drives off, um, and now we got to replace that lamp, that bumped, that's building safety, that bumped, you know, um, something that wasn't building safety. You know, and so, you know, the carpet in a room or something, or, you know, those kind of things. So. I agree, but when we talk to other people in the towns, it's not like every year we've been trying to take care of certain maintenance things. Like overall, the building's in is in good shape. Um, it's just there's a lot of things that run on wheels and belts, and those things break after a while. Um, so the one the uh, we we are looking for a vote to move this forward to discuss at the next meeting. Okay, so moving this draft forward, you're not voting the draft, approving the draft, but you're moving that, you know, you like what you see in front of you, you want to have future discussions on it. Um, and so, and then we are going to make, the subcommittee still got some modifications, Joe's got the, he's got the main draft. One, you got to have one copy because we're all starting to add to it. Um, that we're going to bring to the November meeting, I will send a, upon approval, of moving it forward, um, I will send a copy to all the select boards and finance committees for them to review and let them know again. I've already sent that note out that um, this is coming, Mary, this is kind of off, off our conversation where the car was in front of the horse and as opposed to this meeting and after I put some thought to it, you were, you were dead on there. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we're looking to do. I also open up if anybody has questions or, you know, um, wants to go through this with me or, um, have questions on this between now and the next meeting you know really my door is is open I, if I can't answer your questions I'll get Joe on the phone mm -hmm. he, if he can't answer the questions he calls the next person who calls the next we'll get the answer to all the questions and, and, and go through uh, when we send the, the notice to the finance committees the select them, uh, if we should put a little caveat in there if anybody would like to look at the building or what have they haven't already looked at it have any other further questions to Clarifications. You kind of get back to you at least at least three or four days before the meeting, so you can respond to whatever their concerns are, so that we're not necessarily embarrassed at the meeting because you know, you know we'd like to make sure that it flows nicely, and mm -hmm. you know, invite them to come take a look, and uh, if they got any questions, I, w I would suspect that you guys, uh, the Trevor and the others that select persons there, are talking already with. Oh, I'm sure they have. Your board yeah. mates. So it's not that your budget has processes beginning to have to just like yeah, ours is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all going to come, not going to be a surprise for a change. No. They come trotting through the door with a handful of capital articles. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> will know That's what's going idea. on ahead of time, and that should make the whole process. And, and understand that I've already sent them a letter yeah. that said um, I sent it to the select boards to give to the finance committee. Um, basically, this process that we are tonight, there was a meeting about this tonight. And then after tonight's meeting, if, if approved, I will be sending in a copy on to them, and we welcome them to come to November to give us feedback. Mm -hmm. And then I will write another note with the, when I send them the copy, that includes that language, which I think is a great idea. Anybody's got any questions? There's no such thing as a stupid question. Come, come okay. ask the question, come take a look. Yeah. Is, the parents, yes. is there a formal way that the school committee talks to the press? <coughs> um, you know, I mean, this is, this is, it usually goes it would go through me um, for um, I mean this is a big enough issue that you don't want the reporter to get it really wrong when they write their first article. Good luck. Yeah, they will. They will. They will in, respect, in certain respects. It's, it's a complicated so thing. I, I do think that we probably should do a press release on it, but I also don't. I want to make sure that 
I really want to make sure we're respectful to all. This is really the draft. This is the draft, meaning that someone can come and say something. We can go. We all go. Aha! There's a better way to. To, to, to deal with this issue, and so let's make some adjustments to it. And that's really what November is about. Yeah. We have a full month to talk it up, full month for you to get feedback, and someone says, that's the, the worst idea ever, why don't you guys consider this, or you know that kind of thing. that for you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll get a few of those. Um, none, of our, then, none of our meetings were on camera. You know, so okay. this is, yeah, and so maybe they but that be, is right? so that yeah. November we get that feedback and then we agree and, and mm -hmm. the, the, it be, this is the committee's document now the subcommittee is yeah. going to continue to um, it's going to continue to we're not going to do anything right now um, I'll be working with Joe um, as the point from the school committee to make sure that we get the drafts <coughs> the edits that we talked about tonight and any of the language or errors and that kind of stuff to make sure it's a more buttoned up after the November meeting, we're gonna button it up again, making the other changes, and then we'll bring it to the December meeting where it can be voted upon. Um, and hopefully we have, hopefully we're in a good spot where everybody's feeling comfortable about it. Um, you know, and we move that forward to, then it goes to the to the towns, and then we have to build a, uh, you know, a marketing, um, in, not just marketing, but the information and marketing of what the, what the thing is, so. Uh, move the draft uh, be forwarded to the school committee for the next school committee meeting for review and input from the various finance committees and boards of selectmen uh, for their review. And vote. And vote. You have to say that. And, uh, okay. Repeat that uh, back. A motion from Robert Decker III the and a second from Sorry, Tom Mays. I wrote my name down. Uh, to move the draft report of the task force on capital planning forward to the November 13th, 2018 Frontier Regional School Committee meeting for public comment. I'm not talking about voting. Voting's in December. We'll I'll talk about moving the draft second. forward. Well, you seconded. I'll tip on your name. I don't have to be here tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll talk about we'll the talk November, about November, November meeting. Yep. The idea is, we don't know. The, to be honest with this, to be honest with the process, we don't know. What, if, it, if we get a lot of pushback, this is nowhere, nowhere near the direction any of the towns want to go. And the committee feels like, well, let's take a relook at. It. We could add, we can put other meetings in place. We can change our. We have a deadline that's coming, which is we set ourselves a deadline by the end of December, so that we hit budget season with this done. But I mean, if things were to go off the tracks, we can. This is the, as a committee, bring it back on track. Well, we can make the presentation gets made and what have you later in the meeting. If you've got it on the agenda, you could bring, bring it forward to a vote if you thought you were, everybody was comfortable with it. Or you could wait till December. I, I'm not it's not for me to decide. I, I, I think I presented to the, the towns that the, the, the layout that we are giving it two months for them to have feedback. Okay. Right. And at the end, they can't say there was not time for them to feedback, review it, and reach out to all of you for with their opinions. It really is, we, it's a two and a half month span, and it is a 10 year plan, so yeah. with a lot of money involved, and it's probably the most planning around money we've done in a little while, so um, it's exciting. Yeah, great. That's so a we have a motion. We had a second. And a second. November 13th, I believe. All those in favor? Any opposed? It's anonymous. 